What is good everybody, it's your boy Jason Pikes 4 here, and today we're going to be talking about Danganronpa UDG. I swear, it feels like it has been a minute since we talked about anything Danganronpa related, but we're here now. And essentially, I want to talk about and bring up the subject of, is Danganronpa UDG a bad game? Now, this really stems from two things. One, Verlizzi played it, and obviously, the mans did not like the game. And to be perfectly honest, before I say anything, I do like Verlizzi and his content. It's really good, but I have some things to say about the whole Danganronpa thing, but I'll get back to it in a minute. And then secondly, a whole Twitter discussion about UDG, about Verlizzi playing it, and about, you know, what people's takes on the game is, and how they go about that, honestly. And, you know, a lot of people have been saying that the game is trash, and it's not necessarily good. Although, I don't think it's necessarily the worst experience I had. I don't know what I gave the rating for the game. From what I remember and from what I'm currently feeling, I think it's coasting on a 7 out of 10. I think the first game will be like the one in last place, if I'm being honest. I know that sounds wild. Like, I what? You don't like Dang you don't like Dang and Rumble 1 versus UDG? Like, I, I just don't necessarily care for the first game, if I'm being perfectly honest. It just feels bland-ish, I guess. I, I don't know. Now, about the whole thing with Releasey and him playing Dangan, honestly, I feel like really I've been seeing him for a long time now. I've seen his content since his exposed days. And to be perfectly honest, I feel like Dangan is not the type of game that he would be well, I really would say he shouldn't have gotten in. Because I feel like he hits more of the fast paced games for him. That is really that is something that he really likes. More of the action side of things. You know, not a bunch of games where it's reading and stuff like that. You know, maybe on a rare occasion he should play something like that. But for the most part, I feel like action, fast paced, you know, really hyped up games like that. Or something that is a more up his alley than Dangan Rapa could ever be, honestly. You can really see him not really enjoying it after the ending of Dangan 1. And then the Makana trial, which was also something that kind of just bugged me ever since that gameplay, honestly. And then when it comes to, obviously, UDG, everything was just, honestly, kind of not caring. So, at that point, I just didn't care to continue watching and just kind of went on and did my own thing. Again, I don't hate Releasey, I really don't. I think it's absolutely funny, especially with the Mario Party videos, which they need to make more of, if I'm being honest. But when he comes down to the whole Danganronpa, you know, games, and when it comes down to the constant that he makes with that, it just, when he just don't care about certain things, I just don't really care to continue watching. But it's just one person out of, you know, a lot of people that is sub to his channel and stuff like that so you know even though i'm just one person in the crowd just saying this that doesn't necessarily mean you know i'm about to be like yeah i'm totally right yeah that that he should totally stop playing the game yeah, we don't need people like that i'm not gonna be like that because that's absolutely ridiculous i just wanted to bring that up because i have noticed it for a while and i've always wanted to say something about it but i just didn't want to be like you know, doing it in an asshole way. I just wanted to kind of say it in a way where, you know, it's, you know, something that can be said, but definitely not in a way where people would kind of think less of me or in some shape or form or think I'm trying to go after him, when, which I'm really honestly not. Back to the main question at hand, is UDG a bad game? I'm going to be inclined to say no. And as I said before, I think Dangan 1 is not my favorite. It's my least favorite game of all the Danganronpa games. But UDG is like second place to that, but I don't necessarily think it's the worst thing. Now granted, there is annoying moments when you got stuff going on with it. But before we get to like the actual story things, let's just talk about the gameplay entirely. The gameplay is actually a part of it that's really interesting because you know, you don't really see a lot of shooting, running and gunning in Danganronpa. You really just see, you know, 2D style strolling ass people. Or you want to see some first person, but no shooter type of S type of thing. And then you got like a whole bunch of other elements to Dangan that is normally Danganronpa style stuff. But when they added the gun element into it, it's like, oh wow, this is different. This is something that we don't usually see out of Dangan. And that's kind of made me excited for the future of Dangan, honestly, because now that they said they might be looking at different avenues of how they want to progress the series, it makes me think that now we can potentially get a Danganronpa fighting game, which is something I really, really want. If you don't want it, I will get Shiaki to come in and uppercut you. I'm just being honest. 
so definitely when it comes through so this is just one adventure of going through a different way of showing Danganronpa off so definitely there's plenty of other options of how we could do another Danganronpa game that is a side game and not like a whole main title thing you know it, it'll be interesting to see where they will take it honestly when it comes to the future while we wait for Dangan 4 hopefully one of these days anyway now we have to talk about the story because now i will have to say and agree the story in its writing is not all that great like if you look at any of the danganronpa games really the writing is probably the weakest point of the entire thing and the writing is where a lot of danganronpa should be good at but it's not and it's so kind of weird like you would think a game that literally is almost a visual novel you would think the writing has to be impeccable or at least really decent but it's not and it's strange why it's not one other thing i think dan lacks at is also the characters at themselves because a lot of the times and this is one thing i've always wanted to say about dan and their characters they have their talent and that's pretty much it they're nothing it's nothing but their talent for them and if they don't have their talent that's pretty much it you know they're not gonna necessarily say anything else or talk about anything else outside of that talent which is why it's kind of low-key aggravating every time i keep seeing like you know keep kind of going back and playing some of the dang games or especially playing ultimate summer camp in some cases they only care about their talent nothing else like can y'all find something else to talk about or do could you at least try yes we know you're the ultimate at this but that doesn't necessarily mean you suck at every other thing like you can be good at other stuff as well right for udg specifically the only thing that really annoyed me was komaru and how she was just talking about how normal she is that's about it the whole friendship between komaru and toko was fine i think yeah while toko was also really annoying at times too at least they hit a 180 on her and then made her likable so i didn't necessarily hate toko like i did back in day in one one other thing too is the warriors of hope i don't necessarily see anything wrong with the warriors of hope i thought that was an excellent group of villains and they play the role as villains fairly well and as they were because they're kids you know they had to be annoying in some cases so of course they're gonna be you know shouting and crying and do all the annoying kid things because they are kids and that's kind of fitting of their character the only thing and i will agree with one person that was like oh the kodako stuff in the game was a bit much i will agree that those moments were a bit much because he gave her a backstory where literally she was being used in that sort of way hell even times with her own mom as a mom and daughter set and still the game kind of treats kodako like oh funny guy look at her cute little booty don't you want some of that guys and don't get me wrong while i like me some lolly stuff every now and then while some lolly stuff is good and obviously because kodako is a fictional character it doesn't necessarily matter if you loot her or not if i'm being perfectly honest even with the backstory that's canon you can still mess around with it because again fictional character it's not real if you want to save some real kids you should go ahead and donate to some charities or something but at the end they kind of shouldn't have put the gags with kodako there as well as give her the tragic backstory that she had because it's just really weird it's like do we take it seriously or haha you got you know fondled at that age that's really messed up but haha let's laugh at that and essentially it's kind of just kind of weird like really it, it kind of does go into a weird place again granted i don't necessarily care if you you know want to loot a character even if it's a lolly character i think it's perfectly fine because at the end of the day it's fiction and it's not real but when it comes down to kodako and, and her story and then they include it and then also include the gags to it i feel like that was just in bad taste honestly and i feel like that was just something that they didn't necessarily need to add if you wanted to do some gags like that for a game outside of udg and you know have it that way then go and do it in another game you didn't have to necessarily do it in the same game but there is so many ass shots of kodako of kotako there is so many ass shots and it's actually ridiculous that they put it in that many that, that many times with the backstory that she has but they did and it's kind of not necessarily great and the fact that they also try to i guess put all sorts of other lewd elements with other 
you know, lolly characters within that specific game is also a bit crazy too. Like Monica kissing Nagisa or any type of lewd jokes they had, honestly. It, it's a bit, it's a bit crazy, but that's the route they went in, so. But what can you do? Now granted, I don't necessarily, again, like I said, if it was a, any other game, I think it would have been fine. Like how Himiko in V3 was talking about her small hole, which honestly was pretty funny. And Hyoko is obviously is obviously on some you know lose stuff sometimes too with her character at that point before her giant growth spurt comes in like that's fine as well because it's jokes outside of any type of serious moment and some serious backstory it's kind of whatever it doesn't necessarily you know mean too much things i get if it's maybe uncomfortable for a lot of people but at the end of the day, it's just a work of fiction. It's nothing to really take seriously. But then again, telling this to Twitter is like telling this to telling fire to stop burning. So, you know, it, it might be just impossible. But I do think there is some moments in that game where it does not necessarily need it to be putting certain elements in. And it did it anyway. So I don't necessarily think that it's properly the best thing that they did. But it is something that they did. And whether you or not you have a good experience with it, it's pretty much up to you. Personally, I had a pretty fine experience with it. I actually did like the story. I did like Kamari at the end getting a bit more better and more serious and more mature, honestly. I like that element. And there's plenty of other elements of UDG that I like too. But that but those couple of things are mainly the reason why I wanted to cover it today. Because I know a lot of people are still like, well, UDG was the worst in the series. It's honestly to me, it's really not. But that's pretty much what I wanted to cover for this one. Again, the whole code code thing, if you really are or, ha or was someone that went through something just like something that code code has gone through and you want to be able to try to help out some kids in real life now, even if it might have happened to you, you don't want that happening to someone else. There is going to be charities in the description of this video. So you'll be able to, you know, help out as well and essentially you know, again, it is a work of fiction. So even if someone were to give, I don't know, Kodoko a giant piece of cake from the behind, you know, in some other type of work or a fan work or whatever, again, remember, it is a piece of fiction. It does not necessarily line up with real life, not even in the slightest. Maybe I should probably, when we do go to Danganronpa in the Kokatsu story, maybe I should do something with Kodoko. Maybe I should because Maybe we can actually do something and do one better than UDG. Maybe we could. But essentially, that's pretty much all I want to talk about for this one. So hopefully you did enjoy. If you did, be sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the bell notification, and else. Also follow me on Twitter. I don't. Even, I can't even really say TikTok because I don't even have a... Well, I, I do have a TikTok, but I just don't really be on TikTok like that. So just follow me on my Patreon and become a Patreon member and get a free Kokatsu set. Also subscribe. Again, look at the numbers. It's tragic. Why is my numbers like this? It makes absolutely no sense. If you don't do it, I'm gonna flash Kodako's booty in your face. If you do it, and if you did enjoy it, then you just got Kodako cake. But then I'm gonna flash some... Someone's cake in your face that you're not gonna like and you're not gonna really accept it. So you better subscribe or I'm threatening you with actual ass. So yeah, that's pretty much it for this entire video. And it's been your boy Jason Vikes 4 signing off. How about that? Baby, say my name as if you got a fucking clue. Always caught up in the moment, not condoning what I do. I've been messing with my chemistry to find the better me. Putting thoughts up on the page in hopes that you could get to me. Been this way since a jit, my brain couldn't quit. Running from my issues, roll the pain in a split. Fade away every hit. Nobody needed me to afraid to commit.